And oftentimes our own shoes are uncomfortable. Some of you may have some shoes in your closet that may be your favorite shoes. But you know that when you put those shoes on, they are uncomfortable to the very essence of your soul. Simply because of the, to the core of your soul. But I got news for you. The cobbler from Calvary says, bring to us. And so I want to lift a word which is found in Paul. And there, there, there are, there was not at some deep personal for the reality of peace or in conflict. Uh, do not constitute the sisters peace. Real peace is not peace. Real peace enables you to sleep when the wind is howling. Real peace assures you of the right when even when you're standing in the midst of the wrong. Peace, real peace, lets you see yourself standing when all around you is falling. Everyone at an intimate and personal level long for that kind of peace. You see the church in which Paul spoke to at this time in Ephesus, praise be to God, we can, we can use this in a generic form to help us to understand that in order to have this kind of peace, you've got to know the Lord Jesus for yourself. Yes, Paul knew that within the church there was the absence of real genuine, abiding, authentic peace. And there was, as you know, a division in the church. How many of y'all know sometimes church is divided? Yes, a division which ran long and along the lines of Jews and Gentiles. You see, the Jews were the upper crust. Huh? But the Gentiles were the intruders, if you will. The Jews were the circumcised, as we read in the scripture today. And the Gentiles were the uncircumcised. The Jews had been there a long time, and the Gentiles were the new kids on the block. They had just entered into this new faith. The Jews understood the impact and the importance of the ceremonial law. Uh, the Gentiles were bathed. Uh-huh. Uh, just learning this new religion that they just discovered. And as a result, there was something in that community which created a sense of strife. And to be sure, created and caused the absence of peace. We're going to have differences in the church, my brothers and sisters, but we are in Christ and there should be a sense of peace. You do remember that the temple of Jerusalem was a divided temple. How so, Pastor? Well, it was not uh, simply divided spiritually, uh, but it was divided physically. Well, let me tell you how. There were all class, all kinds and classes of people in the life of the church. But back then in that day, yes, you had the, the Jews. Uh, the, the, the Jews could only go but so far, and there was a wall, if you will, a wall. And beyond that wall sat the women. Well, beyond that wall sat the Gentiles, and every man behind the wall. So the men were separated from the women, and the Jews were separated from the Gentiles. There were walls. The wall. Well, I'm talking about walls. The walls created division. The wall created strife. The wall meant separation. The wall divided husbands from their wives because men and women could not sit together. The wall divided men from women and the wall divided Jews from Gentile. And therefore, there was no peace. Walls are important. And there are, are a, uh, they are a part of our biblical legacy. You may recall, for an example, when Isaiah, who declared that a watchman ought to stand on the wall to warn the city of danger that lurked on the outside. And to warn them that were adva those advancing enemies that were trying to infiltrate or take over. Yes, the watchman's job was also to stand on the wall to, uh, uh, to, uh, to tell those on the inside of the danger that was within as well. The wall, important in the history of Israel. You do recall that Nehemiah, uh, in the midst of the exile, 
Yes, sir. Receive the word that somehow the walls of the old city, the old temple, had fallen down. And so he petitioned the king and asked the king to release him for a little while so he could go and rebuild the wall. You may remember in the scripture that from the book of uh, Ezra uh, that Zerubbabel had the assignment of rebuilding the wall. And while others counseled him about the advisability of coming down from the wall, yes, he declared, I cannot come down from the wall because he has assigned me to this task and to this charge. I tell you, walls have their way. Walls, walls are funny things. Walls not only invade our lives physically, but they can affect us emotionally. They can influence our lives mentally. Walls can bother us psychologically. Those of you that have been in this pandemic have observed the fact that maybe you can stand behind walls. The walls of your homes, and you have been affected mentally, socially, psychologically, and, and, and in every other way. But I tell you today, walls do have their pluses, but walls can also be a challenge. Let me remind you what a, that a wall is. In the first place, a defense mechanism. Well, the wall is designed. Uh, what do you mean, Pastor? Defense mechanism. The wall is a design to shut out. Yes, uh, it protects me from you and you from me. A wall defends me from being known for what I am. And if there is no wall, you can see my weakness and I can see your weakness. And therefore, to defend myself, to protect myself, to shield myself, I build a wall. Y'all don't hear me? You see a wall, a wall also prevents communication. Not only uh, it, it, it pre 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 prevents, or may I say, yeah, prevents communication. A wall prevents communication because, you see, as long as a wall exists, I can possibly, can't possibly know uh, what you're talking about. And I can't understand what you're saying. And as long as I can't understand what you're saying, uh, then there is no communication. And where there's no communication, there is no peace. Don't you know folk put up walls when it comes to communication? And sometimes even in our own homes, we won't speak to our brothers and sisters. And I'm talking about our biological families. And that same thing can happen in the life of the church. It can happen on our jobs. When you build walls and there is no communication, so therefore there is no peace. A wall, a wall, my brothers and sisters, is not only a defense mechanism, and not only does it prevent communication, but a wall also prevents sight. You see, I unfortunately do not have x-ray vision. Uh, if I could, I, I would go behind the telephone booth and put them on my Superman suit, and, and I'll look straight through you, praise be to God. But unfortunately, I don't have that. So walls will also say that you cannot see on the other side. Something because the wall is there. Yes, and so when we have, but somehow the wall is there as a barrier to keep me from you and you from me and also to keep you from seeing me and me from seeing you. When I cannot see you, I cannot sense you. I cannot understand you. I cannot appreciate you. Long as there's a wall, I cannot see the smile on your face and therefore share in your joy. As long as there's a wall, I cannot see the frown on your face and therefore participate in your pain. As long as there's a wall, my brothers and sisters, I cannot uh, uh, see the tears in flowing in your eyes and on your cheek. And therefore, I am insulated from your pain and your hurt. As long as there's a wall. I have a defense mechanism. I cannot see you, and you cannot hear, see me or hear me. There is no communication, and therefore our relationship is incomplete. Because our relationship is not full, and because I have not uh, really sought to share you uh, with you, and you have not sought to, uh, to legitimately share with me, therefore there is no peace. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, and so, 
These walls are destructive to the very purpose and priorities of the church. And I want you to know today, some of my brothers and sisters, we need to do something about these walls. Yes, remember that the wall divided the circumcised from the uncircumcised, as I said a few minutes ago, the men from the women, the Jews from the Gentiles. It separated people in the palace of Almighty God. And I tell you, we need to bring down these walls because these walls can be destructive to all of us. So what does it say? And yes, sir, you, that means we have what I would call compartmentalized Christianity. Everybody got their own little corner, their little cliques, their little people that they hang around. But we need to stop this so that God's work can move forward. I tell you, God, Jesus did not say uh, in the scripture, he did not say, upon this rock I will build organizations. Upon this rock I will build clubs. But he said, upon this rock I will build my church. We are supposed to be unified together. There's unity in the life of the church. And as long as we are comfortable with our compartments, well, as long as we're co comfortable with our cliques, as long as we're comfortable with being over there, here and everywhere, and not being together, there is no peace. Amen. My friends, consider the wall. I want to tell you about a couple walls before I take my seat. There are two kinds of walls. And there is, first of all, a bearing wall. A bearing wall. For those of you that may be in the construction business, a bearing wall has a is a wall that can that you cannot do without when you're building a house. You see, a bearing wall is designed to bear the weight of the structure. It holds the roof up, it holds the structure all together, and you put that bearing wall there so that the house will stay intact. I tell you today, we got to understand that we all have a bearing wall. And his name is Jesus. You cannot do without the Lord Jesus. You've got to have him so that you can stand in the time of trouble. So that you can have the peace of God in the midst of the wars and the things that you may experience in your life. Now, if the wall that is around your life is not connected to the foundation, and that foundation is Jesus Christ, it is not a bearing wall. You see, if the wall around your life is not connected to the rock, Yes, sir. It will not sustain the weight of your problems. It will not, yes, sir, hold you up in your difficulties. It will not sustain you in your trials. It is not, it will not sustain the weight of your tribulations. You see, you need to be connected to the rock. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I tell you, we've got to have that bearing wall. Let me tell you about one other wall when it comes to building. There's also another wall uh, of which Ephesians speaks. It is the middle wall. And it is the interior wall. You can move that wall. Yes, the building will still stand. Yes, sir. Because now, uh, the problem with the interior wall is that it, we create those interior walls. Yeah. So we come into church and we have our little cliques. We have our little separations. We, we create those walls. Yes, we do. We make up our, our own interior walls. We make up our own middle walls. And what is the middle wall? Well, the middle wall is there because of things like discrimination. Middle wall is there of uh, prejudice and biases. And middle wall is there because of envy and strife. But that's what we build. And we can tear those down. And as long as there is a middle wall, there is no peace. Throughout the scripture, God is about the business of doing something about wall. And when the uh, children of Israel made it to the promised land, uh, made, uh, made is to the promised land, the first thing that God had to do was to deal with the wall. Yes, sir. Joshua, Joshua, y'all remember there was a wall, Joshua there was a, there, there, there are folk on the inside uh, uh, who were trying to tear the community apart, but Joshua had to break down those walls I tell you, we need to break down those walls, Daniel, come here Daniel, Daniel in, uh, in, in the book of Daniel, Belshazzar was the king, and, and what was he doing uh, uh, in this situation where well, he was having a party but Belshazzar was not 
depending on Almighty God. And God wanted to warn him. God didn't go down in the body, but God went down while they were having a good time and having parties and doing their own thing. And God didn't go down in a body, in a human body, but he took his finger and wrote on the wall Amen. to remind him of who he was. I tell you, you're, he said, yes, the kingdom is had had been divided. You have been weighed down in the balance and found wanting. Yes, because there was a wall. And so my brothers and sisters, the Apostle Paul says that Jesus saw the wall that divided men from women and the circumcised from the uncircumcised and the Jews from the Gentiles. And he says that he broke down the middle wall of, of partition. How are you going to have your walls broken down? I tell you, the wall is only broken down once you acknowledge your humanity. Once you realize who is in charge of your life. Once you realize that he's the Lord of glory. Once you realize that he's the one that forgives us. Once you realize that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. And when we recognize that, the walls will come tumbling down. I tell you, we need to break them down right now. And not let Satan have the victory over our lives. We need a word just now that will be redemptive for this particular hour. During this time, people are lost. People need to be saved by the power of God. And they need to be influenced by the church of God. Those of us who say that we belong to God and be able to win those souls to Christ. God never leaves us in the middle walls of our lives because of something that we uh, put into those middle walls. Those middle walls can be broken down. Every middle wall can be broken down in our lives. And so, if there were no door uh, in the middle wall, uh, yes, sir, we, we would, we, we would uh, be caught in a rat maze. Yes, aren't you glad there are doors on the inside of your house? You can go from room to room, but if there was no door, guess what? You wouldn't be able to, you'd be like a rat maze, praise God, going around and around. But there must be a door. There is a door. And it is connected to your heart. Yes, sir. Man, but nobody will come bursting into that door. Nobody will break down the door. The door is not and the door is not on the uh, lock, it's not on the outside, it's on the inside. And you've got to let Jesus, Jesus said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. I'm knocking on the middle wall and if you open up, I will come in and sup with you and you with me. Is there a peace in the presence of these middle walls? Well, I want you to read, read uh, uh, again what Paul says in Ephesians. For he is our peace. You see, those of us who have been saved, yes, we have the peace of God. We, we have peace with God. But I tell you, when you have some people who are Christians today, they don't have the peace of God. And that peace of God only happens when we break down these walls. Uh, yes, sir, David, uh, what did David say in Psalm 122, verses 1 through 7? This is what he says in the Word. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compacted together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord, for there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. I tell you, he is, I said Christ is, Jesus is, the Lord of glory is, our peace. And if you don't have peace today, it's because of the fact that maybe you haven't opened up your heart to let him come in and do. You haven't opened up to let the Holy Spirit take over, just like Shanita was singing this morning. You haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to just saturate and mold you and make you into the image of Christ. And he wants to do that. Break it down. Let Jesus in. Let the Holy Spirit take over and watch that wall come tumbling down. And you'll feel the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I tell you, he is our peace. Jesus is the peace that we desire. Trust him. And finally, Thomas, Thomas Dorsey uh, saying this in mortal song that's in our hymn books. He said that I'm tired and I'm weary, but I must toil on till the Lord comes and calls me away. 
where the morning is bright and the lamb is the light and the night is as far as the day. This is where y'all know the song. There will be peace in the valley for me someday. There will be peace in the valley for me. I pray no sorrow, no sadness, nor trouble will be. There will be peace in the valley for me. Aren't you looking forward to that peace? Uh, but you can experience that peace right now because when you're a child of God, I don't care what's going on in your life, he can give you peace. You can sleep at night and not have headaches and heartaches and be depressed and down and out. Yes, sir. He'll take those weights off your shoulders. You ever felt like your shoulders? You were carrying the weight of the world, carrying the weight of your family, carrying the weight of everybody depends on you because you are the go-to person. Yes, sir. You are the one that everybody tries to get money from in your family or even among your friends. But I tell you, he'll take all those weights off your shoulders so that you can experience yeah. his Amen. peace. Yeah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Peace. His peace. I do open the doors of the church this morning. If there's somebody out there in, who's watching live stream, I encourage you to give us a call here at First Baptist Church. You can do it right now. We have someone sitting by the phone. We have a deacon to pray for with you. The number is 919-552-9150. You can call and we have someone pray with you. Also, we want to encourage those of you who would like to give to this ministry, certainly you can give online. And we have a, a, a secure, it's secure through PayPal. You can also, uh, uh, our post office box is uh, PO Box 432. You can send it that way. But also when we do open up at some time in the future, our address is 105 Northwest Street, Fuquay, Verena, 27526. God bless you. Give, let, let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Today is our prayer. Now we will have a song. And I want to thank these musicians, uh, Elder Nehemiah Davis on the organ, and Shanita Robinson, who is our soloist today. And I want to thank the audience. I want to thank those of you who are also helping, Jerry Murdoch and, and, and all, of, all, of, all the video, audio and visual people. I can't call all of your names right at the moment. But I thank the Lord for you today and all of you that are present in the service today, sing to the glory of God. Praise the Lord, For he is our peace. He's not only our peace, he's our strength, he's our hope. And I love how Pastor said he is our low bearing wall. He is what we hold on to, what holds us up. And we thank God for that. Come on and just meditate on him. Come on and start to thank him for being your peace. And the more you start to thank him for being your peace, you begin to feel the peace of God. You begin to feel the joy of God. You begin to believe that it is well in your soul. Hallelujah. Come on and wave your hands to Jesus. Come on and tell God he is such a good God. Come on and tell God he is wonderful. Thank you for being our peace and our hope, God. Thank you for being our joy, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. It reaches to me. You are my strength, strength. Oh, 
Hey! 